Hello everyone and welcome to the first of three lessons as part of Whale Education Month. We are so happy that you are taking part in Whale Education Month 2022 and our study topic this year is evolution and adaptation. My name is Jess and I work for ORCA which is a marine conservation charity that is dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their habitats in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. We do this using research and education and Whale Education Month is an important part of our education programme. Orca loves to inspire everyone about how incredible whales, dolphins and porpoises are. This first lesson for Whale Education Month is all about the extraordinary evolution of whales and dolphins and how they came to exist today. So sit back and listen to this short film introducing whale and dolphin evolution. And when the film has finished, we have some fun activities for you to do. Before we start learning about the extraordinary evolution of whales and dolphins, it is important that we understand what evolution is. Evolution is the way that living things have developed and changed over time. Animals and plants have been living on the planet for millions of years and they have changed a lot in that time. The way they look changes and so does their behaviour. These individual changes are called adaptations and they help animals and plants to survive in their environments. Through evolution, by changing the way they look and behave, Animals and plants have been able to live in different places all over the world and eat many different foods and that's why we have so many millions of species living on Earth today that are really well suited to their habitats and lifestyles. Before we get right into the details, here are some words to try and remember that will help you to understand the process of evolution. Adaptation how living things are specialised to suit their environment. Evolution, the process by which living things can gradually change over time. Inheritance, the process of passing on features from parents to offspring. Species, a group of living things with very similar characteristics. They can breed together to make more living things of the same type. And variation, the differences between living things in a species. The theory of evolution was first described over a hundred years ago by a man called Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin wrote a famous book called On the Origin of Species that talked about how so many species had come to live on Earth and where they might have come from. Let's take a look at an example of how Darwin explained evolution. Darwin explained in his book that when animals reproduce and have offspring, which is their babies, that sometimes their offspring might have a feature that is slightly different about them. When animals of the same species have some differences between them, we call this variation. For example, a deer-like animal that lived many years ago like this little guy, might have a slightly longer neck than its brothers and sisters. This long neck may have been useful when eating leaves from tall trees, and so the deer with the slightly longer neck would be more likely to grow up to be strong and healthy as it could reach more leaves. This would make it more likely to go on and have offspring of its own. Those offspring would then inherit the physical features of their parents, including the slightly longer neck. Then those deer with the longer necks would be the ones more likely to survive and so the adaptation of a longer neck is passed on from generation to generation. This is how scientists think giraffes evolved. Over millions of years their ancient relatives or ancestors evolved to have longer and longer necks until they eventually became the animals we know today called giraffes. Darwin called this process the survival of the fittest, where the animals that were healthier and more successful would be more likely to survive, and this was part of his theory of natural selection, where animals more suited to their environment were more likely to survive. 
These changes or adaptations that animals inherited from their parents took a long time to develop and the evolution and appearance of new species takes millions of years. Scientists think that life on Earth began around 3.8 billion years ago and that all life started out from small, single-celled living things in the oceans. From those simple living things, gradual changes led to more and more changes and over the years between then and now, billions of species have evolved to live on the planet. So now let's talk about the extraordinary evolution of whales and dolphins and how they came to be the big and beautiful animals they are today. Whales, dolphins and porpoises are marine mammals that are also known as cetaceans. Here is an illustration showing all the cetacean species in the world. As you can see, there are a lot of different sizes, shapes and colours, but you can also see that they share a lot of similar characteristics too. Whale and dolphin evolution is very unusual and interesting. All the animals on Earth today originally came from the world's oceans. At one point, millions of years ago, all life on Earth was living in the oceans and slowly, over more millions and millions of years, animals started evolving, changing their bodies and behaviour so that they could crawl, slither, jump and walk onto the land. This happened around 360 million years ago and loads and loads of new species evolved to live on land. Then, around 50 million years ago, some mammals, after years of living on land, went back into the water and these were the ancestors, the early relatives of the cetaceans. Here is a video that demonstrates in a very simple way how one of the whale's early ancestors, the Pachycetus, changed and evolved into an early whale species. Just remember that in this video, millions of years are passing by in just a few seconds. Pay attention to how their bodies change over the years to suit their new environments. So 50 million years ago, we start off with a land animal called the Pachycetus, which looks like a big rat. It starts spending more time in the water, possibly looking for more food. And over millions and millions of years, its body changes and adapts to its new aquatic lifestyle. It gets webbed feet and a big stocky tail to help it swim. It then changes again over millions of years and becomes the Cuchicetus, a long thin animal with a long snout for catching prey, very, very small legs because it doesn't really need them anymore but it does keep coming up to the surface to breathe because it's still a mammal. It uses its big stocky tail to push it through the water. Over millions more years, it becomes the Duradon, a very early whale species, with pectoral flippers instead of front limbs, a big tail to push it through the water, no back legs at all, and it still comes up to the surface because it's still a mammal. Let's look in a bit more detail now at the ancient animals that featured in the video. The Pachycetus is a mammal that lived on land around 50 million years ago. It was roughly 2 metres long with 4 limbs to walk on, a long tail and a snout with long whiskers. The Pachycetus lived entirely on land and was thought to eat meat and sometimes fish. Then some of the Pachycetuses started to spend time in the water, perhaps looking for more opportunities for food or even to escape competition from others or maybe predators. Whatever reason they went into the water, their bodies gradually changed over millions of years to suit their new aquatic lifestyle. The reason we know that animals like the Pachycetus existed is because fossils of their skeletons have been found. Fossils are the remains of prehistoric animals found embedded in rocks and preserved. Fossils can be found all over the world and the Pachycetus fossil was first discovered in Pakistan, which is how it got its name. 
The fossils of ancient whale ancestors have been found in many different places. One of the most recent discoveries was in 2019 in Peru, when a four metre long fossil of an animal with four limbs that could walk on land and swim was found. These gradual changes in the Pachycetus' body led them to becoming an entirely new species, the Ambulocetus. They had webbing on their feet to help them swim, shorter front limbs and a thicker stocky tail. The Ambulocetus still had teeth and whiskers and could still walk on land if it needed to. The Ambulocetus was an amphibious mammal. The word amphibious is used to describe something that can be both in water and on land. Then over millions more years the Ambulocetus changed so much that it became the Cuchicetus. This animal's limbs had almost completely disappeared because it just didn't need them anymore. Instead it used its big long tail for swimming and its long snout for catching prey. As you can see it looks a little bit like an otter, a modern day mammal that also spends a lot of time in water. Eventually, over millions more years, the Cuchicetus changed its body so much that it became the Duridon, one of the earliest known whale species. The Duridon had almost no back limbs and its front limbs had become pectoral flippers or fins to help it swim. Its tail had fins on the end, which we call flukes. Its nostrils were on top of its head to make coming up to the surface to breathe easier, and they continued to have teeth to help them eat their prey. Throughout all these changes, each of these animals continued to come up to the surface of the water to breathe, because they were all mammals. As we know, cetaceans are marine mammals, mammals that have adapted and evolved to a life in the ocean. Mammals are a class of animals that are defined by certain characteristics. One is that they breathe air, and whales and dolphins have to come up to the surface of the water every so often to take a breath. Mammals give birth to live young, and this is exactly what the cetaceans do, rather than laying eggs like fish do. Mammals produce milk for their young, which the young suckle from their mothers, and whales and dolphins do this too. And finally, mammals are warm-blooded, and they are able to make their own body heat, something that whales and dolphins can do. The mammals we are probably most familiar with are land mammals like cats and dogs, which have four legs and are covered in fur. But cetaceans look quite different to land animals and look more like fish than they do land mammals. This is because of something we call convergent evolution, where animals that are very different and not related to each other end up evolving to look similar to each other because they live in the same environment. Although cetaceans are not related to fish at all, because they share the same environment as them, they have similar adaptations such as dorsal fins on their backs, pectoral fins instead of legs, and smooth streamlined bodies to help them swim, with tails to propel them through the water. A good way to tell if you're looking at a dolphin or a shark is to look at the way their tails move. Cetacean tails move up and down to push them through the water, whereas sharks and other fish move their tails from side to side. So what do you think might be the closest living land relative of the cetaceans? Take a moment now to pause this video and discuss with your classmates what sort of land animals that live today might be distantly related to the whales and dolphins. I can give you a clue. It's a large mammal that also likes being in water. The closest living land relative of the cetacean is the hippopotamus.
both the whales and the hippopotamus shared a common ancestor that lived around 50 million years ago. Today, around 90 different species of whales, dolphins and porpoises live on Earth. These are split into two groups or types of cetaceans, the toothed cetaceans and the baleen cetaceans. These two different groups started to evolve alongside each other around 34 million years ago and evolved to have different adaptations so they could hunt in two very different ways. The baleen cetaceans are generally much bigger than the toothed cetaceans and include the great whales such as blue whales and humpback whales. All of the porpoise and dolphin species are toothed cetaceans and so are some of the whales such as beaked whales and sperm whales. As you can see there are quite a lot of differences between the baleen cetaceans and the toothed cetaceans but the main difference as you may have guessed from the words baleen and toothed is what's inside their mouths. Baleen cetaceans, like this humpback whale, have what we call baleen plates inside their mouths. These are strong plates that are made out of the same stuff as our hair and fingernails, called keratin. When these plates are lined up all together in the whale's mouth, they look like a big bristly brush or moustache. The baleen whales use their baleen like a sieve. They take big gulps of food from the sea and then push the seawater out of their mouths through the baleen plates so that they don't swallow it and instead are left with all the fish in their mouths. The toothed cetaceans have a very different way of catching food to the baleen cetaceans. Toothed cetaceans have teeth to catch their prey and they also have a special tool to help them find their prey called echolocation. Echolocation is where toothed cetaceans make clicking sounds that get pushed out into the water by a special organ in their head called the melon. The clicking sounds then bounce off its prey and the dolphin can hear the sound and where it's coming from and they can find their prey. It is called echolocation as it's just like us shouting into a tunnel and hearing our echo come back to us. As you can see from this picture, whales, dolphins and porpoises have evolved into many different species that live today, some with teeth and some with baleen, and are still evolving now. The way that they have evolved and adapted over millions of years has meant that they are suited to many different habitats and many different food sources all over the world, and they have become very successful and very important marine mammals in the oceans. Before we finish this video, let's recap what we have learned so far. We now know that whales and dolphins evolved from land animals around 50 million years ago. We have learned about their ancestors, which included the Pachycetus, the Ambulocetus and the Duradon, and that they evolved into two different types of cetaceans that we know today, toothed and baleen. Perhaps when this video has finished, you could tell your teacher and your class something new that you have learnt from this video that you didn't know before. In the next lesson, we're going to look in more detail about the adaptations that cetaceans have evolved to help them survive. Thank you for watching today's video. We now have some evolution themed activities for you to take part in.